So what's the best free editing software for creators this year? Well, I'm joined here by Nate from the Think Media team, longtime editor on the channel and now content creator. And my name's Craig. I'm also one of the content creators here. We've been editors for years. We've used lots of different softwares. Well, we've condensed our search and our softwares that we use down to our top three options that are all free options for creators. We're just gonna dive right into the first option, which is iMovie, right? Everybody knows iMovie. It's been a long time software available for exclusively Apple users. It's actually a pretty great software if you're just a beginner. So we're gonna talk about some of the pros and cons of going with mm -hmm. iMovie. Starting with, of course, it's completely free, but it also runs just super smoothly, even on older Apple devices. I think that's key. A lot of people aren't necessarily even moved to the M series chips. So if you have an older laptop or an older computer, if you're still editing on your like super old Intel Mac, iMovie is still a really great choice for beginners. What do you think about iMovie? Yeah, I mean, when I got my start, I used iMovie on my phone, my iPad, and it's just so easy for a beginner to just get started, which yeah. is the most important thing. You don't want to have the friction of trying to learn something. Yes, you have to learn every tool, but really it's so simplistic. Chances are it's already on your phone or, yeah. or your MacBook Pro, whatever it is. So great that you can just start and start assembling different clips starting to understand the language of editing, adding in music, text, B-roll. You can do basically 80% of what you need to do with editing software, mm -hmm. and just getting started is the most important thing. But yeah, I know you start also yeah. with iMovie. Talk a little bit more about yeah, that. Yeah, I think for me, my decision to go with iMovie, and at the time, I even had like an HP laptop that had like Windows Movie Maker, and so there were some different right. options that I could use, but iMovie just felt like very Apple. I think what Apple does so well is it's just user-friendly, it's basic, it's easy to use. Like I know that's one of the critique of Apple at times is even their phones, like you can't customize things as much as you would like to. Well, when you're just a beginner editor, you're not even worried about customization, you just mm. wanna be able to get your footage on the timeline and edit it. And so a feature that iMovie has is it's a really simple drag and drop timeline. It uses a magnetic timeline. So everything kind of just snaps to the beginning of your project. So there's not gonna be a lot of empty space or you don't have to worry too much about trying to like organize your clips too much. You just cut out the mistakes and then everything's gonna organize and snap together and you're gonna be able to edit a little bit more sequentially in order which is actually the reason why I pivoted away from iMovie because that's not the way my brain works necessarily. But for a lot of beginners, that's the way their brain works. It's gonna be easiest to edit mm -hmm. from beginning to end, cut out all the little mistakes, everything's gonna snap easily. And that's kind of the benefit of going with iMovie. Yeah, there's a lot of benefits. There are some cons with it just being a free program. Mm -hmm. First off is it's Apple only. So you have to have an Apple device, a phone, iPad, or even a Mac. But if you're using Windows, Basically, you can't even can't use, use it. it. <laughs> so really unfortunate. I would also say there are, are some times where you can't really color grade your videos. You don't have that flexibility to get creative. Yeah. I think there's just a brightness and a contrast saturation and that's it. So unless you want to really get cinematic, you will need to eventually upgrade to yeah. either Final Cut or some of the other programs we'll yeah. talk about. And granted, I mean, it is a con, but a lot of creators who are just starting out, maybe you're even just recording on your phone to begin with, you're not really worried too much about the color grading or getting extra detail and resolutions. Like you kind of just want to hit record, bring the bring footage in, yep. into your editing software, chop it up and export. And so iMovie can be good for that, but there certainly are some cons and limitations for beginners. I think overall, if you are an Apple user, and you're just starting out and you just wanna try something, you already have the software, it usually comes installed on whatever machine you have. And so just try it out, give it a try and see if you like it. And honestly, it could be a software that you use for several years and not need to upgrade. And if you're looking for a software that you can use on Windows and Mac is our next suggestion, it is CapCut, which is super impressive of its capabilities. I think of it as iMovie on steroids where it's yeah. still beginner friendly, but you have a lot of pro effects you can simply drag and drop. I've used it a few times and it's seriously impressive what you can do if you wanna cut out a background, like put yourself on a different background. Yes. Diff really, really crazy and powerful effects. Have you messed around with CapCut Absolutely, much? I, and I think where I'm most impressed with CapCut is all of these additional features like we're talking about. It's like, yeah, it's on steroids, but it's also like, like on some different types of stuff, like some <laughs> acid or something, because yeah, you can some do some side effects. <laughs> yeah, like you can do some crazy stuff inside of CapCut. I mean, you can do like, like there's some cool tracking where it can track 
your mouth and your teeth. You can even whiten your teeth color. You can brighten your eyes. It can follow your skin tones and brighten your face and your luminance values, your brightness mm -hmm. values of your skin tones. So it can do a lot of stuff to just make, um, where if you don't have those ability to like, you don't understand how to do masks and mask different portions of your frame. It just makes it really easy using their AI tools and their software. You can do line animations. You mentioned br background removal. Mm -hmm. So if you are somebody who does green screen kind of work or reaction type content, even if you don't have a green screen, it actually is really effective at removing the background, right. just sensing the subject who's there. So that's a really cool way to add some different cool effects. And it's honestly really stable. Like it's a really stable software. Anytime I've opened it up to test it out, I typically don't use it as my software of choice. I haven't, at least at this point. But we do work with editors who have. And a little story here about Kafka is we have an editor who we worked with for one of Sean's videos. And her editing, her edit of this video actually broke the record for viewer retention. It was like 97% of people who watched this video were still watching after 30 seconds. And she was using CapCut, a lot of their built-in tools and effects. And she killed it, she crushed it, and people wanted to watch the video. So you yeah. can have pro-level results even out of a free software like CapCut. That's pretty impressive. And then there's things like subtitles, captioning tools, which definitely can't get in iMovie. So even if you're doing more vertical content, I think the CapCut mobile experience is great, if you're, especially if you're just focusing on short form, vertical content, really impressive stuff. So both the mobile and a desktop app is pretty impressive. Now, there's also the ability to get a pro version. Mm -hmm. This is a subscription, either $10 a month or $90 a year, and you get even more effects transitions. But if you're simply getting started, honestly, the free, free experience, fine. yeah, just start with it and yeah. then see if you wanna go from there. Yeah, you'll find out pretty quickly if you're somebody who even needs the pro version. Um, Typically, we find that creators don't even need to upgrade to the pro. A lot of the built-in effects are already really robust. You don't necessarily have to upgrade. And another con that is with CapCut is, I mean, it's not really a downside, but something to be aware of is the fact that it is owned by TikTok. And particularly in the US, we have some conflict of interest, <laughs> I'll, put, I'll say the least. But um, yeah, it may not be available. Actually, there was a brief time where you can actually download yeah. CapCut or TikTok. So something to be mindful of, who knows in the future, if it's not available, we'll try to look for our best replacement as far as a good editor and update you guys. But essentially, in summary, I feel like it is a better tool to start with if you definitely have outgrown iMovie or you just know, okay, I know the limitations of iMovie, I need to really get experienced short form, yep. really fast editing. I think CapCut is right up your alley. Yep, and make sure you download the desktop app for whatever, whether on your Mac or, or Windows, you can download the de desktop app, but there is a browser-based version of CapCut as well, which is not as good. I wouldn't recommend people use mm. the browser base. Make sure you download, get the actual application onto your computer. It's way better than the browser-based version. Awesome. Well, we'll go to our third recommendation, and if you are seriously trying to improve <laughs> the level of your edits, full customization to your heart's content, then DaVinci Resolve is an amazing program that is free. There's a free version, there's also a paid version. However, I don't think many people actually need to get the Studio One. Um, you can always try out the free version. It's also pretty cool that Resolve, if you buy any Blackmagic products, they include a license for free. Chances are if someone's bought one, maybe you could get a license even cheaper. So yeah. it's pretty affordable in terms of the capabilities, but in the free version, you have everything you need to get started editing great color grading tools. They have a bunch of new AI features that they just released. I'm not sure entirely what the difference is between the studio and the free version, yeah. but I'm sure a lot of those stuff will carry over into the free version. Um, this is the program that I use and I would recommend if you're, you are an editor or you want to really just understand one tool and really fully get to know it, this is a great one to learn. Yes, there is a learning curve. It's not that easy. So definitely recommend watching several tutorials mm -hmm. on. Um, let's talk about a few of the cons. Like we talked about learning curve, a little bit more complicated. Mm -hmm. It's not, it might be even more computer um, resource intensive. Sure. So you need a faster computer to run it. That is something to be mindful of. Definitely Compared to iMovie, that. right? Yeah. It's just very light on every computer. Resolve. You, you do need a decent computer. Yeah, absolutely. And then talk a little bit about, um, 
you know, they have these different app or different like sort of editing interfaces inside yeah. of Resolve. They have like Fusion, which is for their visual effects or Fairlight, which is their audio editing. The best thing about Resolve is you have everything in one application. So different pages for the timeline of your editing process. So in the media folder, you can organize all your media clips. And the edit page is where I live 90% of the time cutting my video. But then as soon as you want to color grade your videos, you have a whole color page and your workspace transforms into features that is going to be beneficial to mm -hmm. color grading and you can do basically anything yeah. with, within that. Yeah. And then Fusion is basically like the equivalent of After Effects in DaVinci Resolve. So motion graphics, 3D compositions, I barely scratch the surface of Fusion, um, super powerful stuff. And then Fairlight is an audio page. So you can go in and adjust audio based off each track or customize it. They release a new AI feature called Audio Assistant, which literally with one click of a button, it will take your audio from your voiceover, sound effects, music, put those on different tracks, crossfade the audio, EQ. It's really amazing. We saw a live demonstration yeah. and we're blown away by its capabilities. So if you're looking for a really powerful editing yeah. experience, yes, you need to commit and learn to it, but it definitely worth it if yeah. you are looking for the best of the best. Yeah, and it's, again, it's free, and if you wanted some of the enhanced features, the most you're ever gonna pay is less than $300 for this software. Mm -hmm. I'm a Premiere user, I love Premiere, I love Adobe's products, but what you're describing, like you would need to use uh, multiple different softwares, After Effects, Audition, Premiere Pro, to, to talk about you know your full editing process. Right. Um, and you're describing this one software can do all these things natively. It's a one-time payment of $300. Adobe's like $60 a month. So you're paying mm. multiple hundreds of dollars a year to have this software. So I do love Premiere. I think there's a lot of pros to going with Premiere. But if you're a budget-minded creator, you want to save as much cash as you can. I mean, my goodness, DaVinci is killing the game right now. Absolutely. And if you want to learn more about diving into Resolve, we have plenty of tutorials on the channel. Be sure to check it out right here.